Welcome at Femtolasis, the Vienna site of Spectrophysics Newport. My name is Andreas Asion. I am responsible for the research and development. Here at Femtolasis, we have three clean room areas for research and development. One for the oscillator, which is a test facility as well as a research lab. One for the applications where we recently had the chance to look into nano and material processing with quite short laser pulses, 6 to 20 femtoseconds, and the amplifier laboratory where I'm standing here. Our MEDEA project is the development of a complete new laser source for the infrared. And this laser source is able to produce carrier envelope phase stabilized few cycle pulses in the infrared. And here, in terms of hardware, you have the chance to see the beginning of the project. We have here a multipass amplifier. We call it femtopower. And the multipass amplifier is seeded by oscillator pulses generated from that oscillator. The Rainbow 2 here is our latest product. It has a complete sealed cavity and the CW source and Millennia is integrated in the system. It is completely remote controlled and by the user interface one has access to intra-cavity parameters and the laser operational parameters like spectrum, power, diet current of the millennia, water-based temperature, beam pointings, etc., are monitored permanently. The Rainbow is equipped with a CP4 module, and if you have had the chance to see our tutorial video, you would immediately recognize the most important component here is the acousto-optical modulator here. The beam is coming out here, and the pulse strain is focused into this small little tiny crystal. It's a periodic pole lithium neobed crystal. And via difference frequency, mixing new wavelengths are generated in the near infrared. And this wavelength component interfere with the wavelength component present in the laser pulse. A beat signal is generated and the beat frequency equals the carrier envelope frequency. This mirror reflects the laser pulse towards the AOM and the infrared part is transmitted by this mirror and the pulse strain which carries the carrier envelope frequency is focused on that photodiode. The photodiode signal is connected to the CEP4 electronic. The carrier envelope offset frequency is filtered out, amplified and applied to the AOM here. An acousto-optical wave is generated and the wavelength of this acoustic wave is proportional to the inverse of the carrier envelope offset frequency. The layout of this system and the orientation of this AOM is such that the minus first diffraction is most efficient. So the beam is coming out here. 75% up to 80% of the beam, which is going in here, are diffracted in the minus first order. And because it's the minus first order, the RF frequency, which is the carrier envelope frequency, is subtracted from the frequency comp. And therefore, the pulses after the AOM are perfectly carrier envelope or <coughs> offset free, uh, carrier envelope phase stabilized. So to give you a better idea what the beat signal is, 
you see here the photodiode signal on this oscilloscope. The time domain here is in nanoseconds, and these are this is the oscillator pulse train, and the difference of these peaks is of the order of 10 nanoseconds. So this is the inverse of that, is the repetition rate of the oscillator. What you clearly can see is this beating on top of it. And the frequency of that, that's actually the carrier envelope offset frequency. Let's have a look on the spectrum of that signal. The pronounced peaks you see here, these are coming from the repetition rate. This is the repetition rate itself, and this is the second order. And the sidebands here, this is the carrier envelope offset frequency. And what the CP electronic is doing, it is filtering out that spectral range so that just only one frequency component, carrier envelope offset frequency component, is amplified and applied to the AOM. So what you can see here on that screen is the autocorrelation and the spectrum of the rainbow. We measure the autocorrelation after the CP4 module and the dispersion, in particular coming from the acousto-optical modulator, is compensated by chirp mirrors. So we end up here with eight femtoseconds. It's not really the shortest parts we can get, but for this project we don't care. Most interesting part is the huge spectral bandwidth. What we are doing is we are taking components around 720 nanometer and components around 880 nanometer and we are seeding two stages, amplifier stages and after the amplifier stages we are combining these two wavelengths into a um, difference frequency uh, optical parameter, optical amplifier and generate near-infrared pulses around 3.9 micrometer. So that's the idea. So what are the next steps in our media project? First of all, we will equip this amplifier stage here with 700 nanometer, 720 nanometer optics. We will set up a second module plate with 880 nanometer optics. We will remove the grating compressor, build up a second one so that we have two synchronized outputs at 720 nanometer and at 880 nanometer with 30 femtosecond pulse duration. And the last thing we have then to do is to build up the nonlinear optical parametric amplifier. So now we are at the end of our lab tour. Maybe we see us in three years again and I'm able to show you a full operational system. So, goodbye.